In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create surf ramps in Blender using Surge, my uh, surf ramp generator Blender add-on. Uh, so first you're going to want to download it. Um, the link for this repository will be in the description. This is a private one at the moment, but I'll make a public one. Anyway, you click on code, click on download zip, and then save it to your downloads folder or wherever is easy for you to see. And once you have that downloaded, you're going to open Blender. Just get rid of these default objects here. You're going to want to go to Edit, Preferences, go to Install, navigate to the folder. Ours was in Downloads, and I have a few already because I was testing this. So click on um, whichever one is recent or you know the one you want. <laughs> click on Install Add-on, and that should install it automatically. If it ah uh, there we go, Surf Ramp Generator it's already on. Um, I'll just take that off. So if you can't see it, just type surf up in here and then enable it there. And that should be installed. To test if it's installed, press N in the 3D view and you should see a surge little button down here and click that. And then we have our surf ramp generator. And let's just add a new ramp. And so this is what it looks like. Um, next, I'm going to show you what all these um, attributes do and how you could create surf ramps. So let's just start by just adding the default ramp that comes with the add-on. Um, if you'll notice, you'll zoom out and you won't be able to see anything, uh, which is why I've added this little uh, handy button up here, which increases the view distance so you can then see the ramp we've made. And as you'll notice, it's a simple wedge-shaped ramp that occurs to the left, um, but we can change all those properties and it creates a ramp mesh here and then the physics mesh that you need as well. So it includes both of those already made so you don't have to worry about creating those yourself. So let's just go through these options. So ramp name, obviously that's the name of our ramp. I'll leave that at ramp now. It creates the visible mesh under this name and it will also create the uh, collision mesh or the physics mesh and append uh, underscore fizz on the end of that material name now this needs to be ramp for the ramp we're going to make and that's the name of our vtf file and that will assign the visible mesh a material um, called ramp so the um, vnt would be able to look it up um, next we have slope dimensions so the default is 320 high by 256 wide let me just turn on measurements here and click on this face there. as you can see it's 320 meters by 256 meters um, you don't need to worry about these units meters is fine it's um it's essentially hammer units um so that's the default and uh, we can change that obviously we can double it so we can make a ramp which is 640 high by 512 wide so this is double the size as you can see 640 high by 512 wide I'm going to stick to the default. Um, I'm going to make a default size ramp, but you can obviously change this to whatever you like. You can make ridiculous ramps. You can make silly things like this if you want, um, but the UVs will be weird. Uh, you'd have to do that manually yourself. Okay, so let's move on. Let's set this back to 320. So I've included two different uh, ramp styles. There's a wedge ramp, which you've seen, uh, which looks like this, obviously, and then a thin style ramp, which looks like, um, oh, let me just click that, which looks like this. So these are the two ramp styles you can have, a wedge or a thin one. And you can also change the thickness of um, the thin ramp. So if we change this to 128 and create a new ramp, you'll notice that it's this real thick boy now, um, which we don't really want. Um, so I'm going to change that back to the default, which is 32. And we're going to make a thin ramp, I think, for this one. Uh, next is surf direction. Now this is the direction you want to have to hold, so left or right, A or D, um, to surf the ramp. So if we create a left ramp, you know that you have to hold A to strafe along this ramp. And if we create a right surfable ramp, you'll notice that the ramp direction is the same, but we now have to hold D to surf along that. And obviously we have uh, both 
option here so you can both uh, surf both sides it makes a double-sided ramp uh, same for the wedge as well it will do a double-sided wedge so we're going to make I think we're going to make a thin double-sided or both-sided ramp and next we have ramp direction now we'd be we've been creating left turning ramps you can obviously make right turning ramps and we have ramps that turn upwards ramps that turn downwards so make these sad depressed ramps and we have dips and arcs now dips are basically up turning ramps but i've doubled them so you can have these dips and arcs is the opposite so these are downward ramps but they've uh, been rotated and um, into this shape basically so we're going to make an upwards ramp and next we're going to talk about smoothness so the default is 16 so we create a ramp like this and it has 16 sections to it 16 uh, steps and that's generally a, a good smoothness um, you can crank this all the way up and you end up with a ramp that looks like this obviously you'd think that this would be better than 16 but honestly this is way too much this is overkill um, so if you have a ramp like 16 you'd have the same the exact same experience on a ramp like this as you would on a ramp with way too many uh, sections on it so keep this to a sensible value um, we can go as low as three if you wanted um, you can have this very faceted kind of old school ramp if you wanted next let's go to we'll put that back to the default next let's talk about the angle so um, we're making 90 degree ramps at the moment but let's just change uh, our ramp direction to a left ramp and change this to 45 oh I forgot to change it let's change it to a left and we'll make 16 smoothness okay so you'll see now this turns 45 degrees in the direction of the the ramp direction so we can do up make little kicker ramps like this and we can do the same for dips make little dip ramps and yeah so that's what angle does uh, we can also make loops so if we put the angle to 360 create a left we can make ramps like this obviously because we're we're changing the angle here you're going to want to increase the steps or the smoothness to make that smoother so let's just double and now we have a smoother uh, loop here you can also do loops for the dips as well and you can create cool like little yo-yo shapes and i think uh, both sides will be surfable of this on this so kind of a cool shape if you wanted to make that so that's the angle we're going to make a 90 degree upwards ramp i'm going to change this back to 60. next i'm going to talk about the size um i guess uh let's talk about size in relation to left ramp so we'll create a ramp and the size is 1024 now what this means is if i go into the top view from here to here is basically um 1024 hammer units so it's 1024 down 10 20, 1024 across and so the footprint of the ramp from like here will be 1024 hammer units and uh, so if i create another ramp and i double this uh 2048 the size of the ramp is now here to here which would be 2048 hammer units so that's what size does and the same thing for dips as well and you can basically increase the size however you want we're going to go with 2048 to make a nice big big ramp uh, finally i'm going to talk about uv scale now this is the scale of the uvs funnily enough um, uh, i'll just make a ramp like this at the moment and um, to see uh, how the uv is textured on our or how the uv mesh or the map rather is um, shown on our ramp we're going to want to go to our materials tab and uh, well make sure you click on the visible mesh um, then go on use nodes change the base color to an image texture and then you want to open um, a test texture so you can see I'll, I'll include 
um, these textures uh, in the description so you can download them. I'm just going to open this test texture. And then you're going to want to click on this button here so you can see materials in the view. Now you won't be able to see anything because the physics mesh is overlapping so just turn that off. And then you can see this is how um, uh, the surf ramp generator generates the UVs and the scale relates to these front facing and these underside um, UVs. So let's just make a new ramp and we'll change the UV scale to one instead. So let's just turn off that and as you can see we now have more repetition in our material. Um, so let's just change uh, this test um, image to a ramp image and you can see this is how um, the ramp would look with this kind of texture uh, here. So I've set it up so that um, the uh, UVs look like, let me just, oh, and if, you, if you're in any viewport, 3D viewport, and you can't see the ramp, just open the surge menu here and click on increase view distance, and then you can see everything again. So that's a handy little helper function. Um, so select them all. You can see the UVs are set up like this. And so um, these outside edges here on this twin, uh, on this thin um, ramp here, basically correspond to the top here. So the UVs um, basically show this part of the texture. So if you have a texture look, that looks like this, the borders around the edge will correspond to the top of the texture. And I've just set it up like that because it works with mine. So if you want that, um, you can just set up a texture which looks like this. Um, but obviously if you want something else, you're gonna have to UV wrap them yourself. Um, but basically what UV scale does, if I can just select them all, it basically scales the UVs. Oh, let me just change that. It scales the UVs like this. Uh, let me just show you so you can see. There we go. So it scales the UVs along here, and as you can see, it changes the scale of the texture on the ramp. So that's what UV scale does, and that is essentially all of the all of the properties that you can adjust with this add new ramp button. So I'm going to make a ramp now. As I said, I'm going to make a upward 90 degree map, 16 smoothness, and this height. And I'm going to change the actually I'll leave the UV scale to one. So I'm going to create that now, and there we go. Now obviously you can export this and compile it and it will work straight out. Um, you can then create other ramps, um, like say if I wanted to create, let's just call this ramp one, I wanted to make a downward slope. You can create that and export them both into Hammer and then you can move them however you want. Um, so let's take this one for instance, we can see if I was doing this in Hammer, I could rotate it and snap it to this next one, like so. Um, but you could also create just one ramp out of this, out of these two ramps by just simply clicking both and joining them together. And then you have a ramp which looks like this. And you'll do the same for the physics as well. So select both. And then obviously you're going to want to call these the same. Um, like so. So you can either export them separately and basically snap them together in Hammer, or you can join them in Blender and create one ramp if you like. Um, which is what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to make that ramp. So I'm going to make upwards ramp like this. And my next ramp at the end of this, uh, I'll call it ramp two, even though it doesn't matter because I'm going to join them together. I'll make a 45 degree upward curve at the end of this. And obviously it's made inside this other one, um, which we don't want. So I'm going to rotate this, so rotate 180 degrees and do the same for the physics, rotate 180 degrees. And there we have our ramp. So I'm going to join these up. Oops, I'm going to join the physics meshes up and then the visible meshes. So they're joined. I'm going to rename these so they match my QC file. And there I have my ramp. 
and let's just check the UVs all look good. They look fine to me. Um, and so once you have your ramp or ramps, you can export them and mess with them in Hammer, which is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to export this and then I'll show you it in game. So I've set up my Blender source tools, uh, created my QC file, put my materials in the correct directory and all that other nonsense you have to do. If you're using Blender source tools, you can of course use source ops if you want your life to be happy. Um, so if, are you, if you're using Blender source tools, uh, you're gonna wanna remove these ramps from this collection, otherwise I can't get it to go for whatever reason. It won't show up as exportable. So once you're happy with your ramp, click export, selected objects, and then scroll down and open the Half-Life model viewer so we can check our ramp. Let's load it up, and there we go. It looks good to me. Um, you might notice that on the underside there's a seam um, where these two um, ramps meet. Uh, that's just because of the way I'm using the solidify modifier when I make these, uh, when I generate these ramps. Um, this won't happen on the wedge shaped ramps. It will only happen on the um, on the thin ramps like this. Um, and I've actually set it up so that you can't surf underneath. So this is in fact a big solid object, which I'm probably going to fix before I release this. But in case I haven't, you're, you won't be able to surf on the inside of these, basically because of this seam at the bottom. But as I said, it's not an issue on wedge shaped ramps, just these um, thin ramps, or at least thin doubled ramps. You won't have this issue with the thin single sided ramps. Okay, so now we have our model and we're happy with it. We're gonna go into Hammer and use it. So I've already opened up Hammer, created a default cube map, uh, which just has a skybox. So I'm gonna to go to a static, create a static prop. Navigate to my ramp, hit apply, and then we have our surf ramp. So I'm just going to set this up so that we jump from this platform up here and then we can surf. Um, that's the wrong way around. Where's the platform? Oops. So we'll rotate this this way. That looks better. Let's put this uh, in the middle for no reason whatsoever. So there we go. That is our surf ramp in Hammer. And now I'm going to compile it and show you what it's like to surf in game. So here I am. In... Fuck off. So here I am in game. And I'm just going to surf this ramp now. There we go. So there we go. Nice and surfable. Both sides, everything's good. Um, and so yeah, you can either create ramps like this, um, wedge shaped ramps, and you can create modular ramps so you can export the two ramps I used to create this separately and then move them about however you like. Um, and you can basically make whatever kind of shape you desire. Um, so I'm just gonna surf this a bit and uh, I just want to thank you um, for watching this video and downloading Surge if you um, if you want to. As I mentioned with this ramp though, um, the physics doesn't extend down here. So this is solid. Um, I'm probably going to fix that before I release this um, so you don't have to worry about this. If however you do find out that um, the released version still has this, just know that I was lazy. I could not be bothered. Uh, so thanks again for that. And, um, uh, put any comments you have and I will try to fix any issues you have. So if you have some issues with creating these ramps, I will try to uh, help you out. So again, thanks for watching and um, have fun using the tool.